Hi, I'm Dr. Charles E. Rogers, Senior Pastor of Hope Community Church. We're excited week after week, uh, knowing that you have the opportunity to join us in our worship experience through the medium of television. Uh, as you know, through television, we're only able to provide a small sampling of the incredible worship that goes on at Hope Community. And we want to invite you to come out and be with us. We're located at 1111 Pulaski Pike, right here in the center of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, we're, we'd just be glad to have you and your entire family coming and be a part of our worship experience. God bless you. We're the whole community church, the church where everybody's somebody and no one is a stranger. Be blessed. Where did I tell you to go? Okay. Verse number seven. <laughs> y'all so, y'all so church crazy that I can't hardly read scripture in here. I, I be, I be in the book and people be saying, oh, I know what chapter he going to. I know what verse he go. Oh, that verse. I love this church. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and you, you already know. We are troubled somebody in here on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And the church said, I need you on your way to your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, after all the things I've been through, I'm still here. You ought to honor him. Has anybody been through some things? Some stuff that you shouldn't have made it through. But God got you through. Go ahead and slap somebody else a high five and say, I'm still here. <laughs> God, I want to thank you. I feel preaching. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I... Of all the things that can be said, one of the things that all of us should say is God has been good to me. I don't care what anybody say about it. How little people may think about us. And how messed up they may see us. When it's all said and done, we're left with the fact that God has been good to us. You can present whatever evidence you have against it. How bad our life is. How little we have. But he's still good. Nothing that we've been through makes him less good. I don't care what's working in our lives and what is not. Trouble don't change it. Circumstances don't change it. People coming in and out of your life don't change it. God's been good. And he's been so good that he takes everything that happens to us and work it together for good. 
Your worst days, your dimmest circumstances is about to bless your future. Because he's taken some of us to a place that he don't have to please us for him, us to trust him. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 5. We glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. In other words, I've learned how to hold on in times where I used to give up. I've learned how to stand in places why uh, before time would not stand because I realized that tribulation work at patience. It's tribulations that taught me how to stand in places where I used to fall. I didn't learn how to trust God uh, with a new job. I learned how to trust him with nothing but my daily bread. Because tribulation produce patience the only way some of you will grow in God is that God uh, has to pull you out of a good times and you will learn through your tears the same stuff they used to trip over you'll now walk over because of where God is taking you and when the things people used to, you'll know that you're getting to where you ought to be in God because the thing that people used to say to you no longer bothers you. Do I have anybody in here? Man, if people only knew you back then. Is there anybody in here who got a back then? The thing that they said to you last week, they couldn't say to you back then the lie they told on you the other day they couldn't have told on you not back then they couldn't have disrespected you back then they, they, they sitting around on your job talking about you think you say but uh, they ought to be thanking God that you're saved as you are because the proof that you are saved is that you're holding your peace when you used to shut the whole place down. Do I have anybody who got a back then? Who, 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 who know you had a little cussing in you back? Back then, they, 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 they know they couldn't have said everything to you because uh, if they did, they would have to have security walk them to the car because you catch a case. back then now they think you're weak they don't know you won because the trying of your faith it produced patience it, it ain't all from just coming to church and I, I thank God for my relationship that's in the house of God but, 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 but God then took me to a secret place and people who are shallow uh, will only see you shouting and dancing and they won't know nothing about why it is that you got your shout and dance on. That's why I'm an unapologetic praiser because after everything that I've gone through, I don't care what happens, I will give God praise. Do I have anybody like that in here? even try to explain to people who don't want to know my story uh, and, and, and can look at me and think that I've been a preacher all my life and don't know that my praise has been generated by my trouble uh, what is going on with me uh, isn't it something how people can look at you just because you don't clown and then think you ain't never clown isn't it something how people can see you now and because you don't look as bad as your past and think that you ain't uh, never been through nothing and you don't understand stand nothing don't even trip when people look at you and don't understand you because uh, of what God has done for you sometimes you just got to praise God and let them find out about your testimony later do I have anybody in here so, sometimes you just got to go ahead and give God what he deserves and give him uh, what he's due and, and, and then let them uh, let them 
them find out why it is that you're praising them later. Let them find out about the cancer later. Let, let them find out about being homeless later. Let, let them find out about the drug use later. Let, let them talk, find out about the divorce and leaving you with two kids and no job later. Honey, everybody that's looking at you don't know you. That's why, honey, you sometimes you just got to turn your head and just begin to praise God like it, what they think don't even matter. Do I have anybody in here who just bless God for stuff nobody else know? See, that's some things that God did for you. Baby, if your neighbor knew everything that you went through, every time you jump up, they'll jump up too. Because there's something about the miracle that's in your life that ought to bless somebody else's life. Look at somebody, slap them a high five and say, you don't know like I know. God, I feel like preaching. Sometimes you just got to let them sit there and think you're churchy. I'm not churchy. I'm grateful. I, I'm, I thank God for everything that he's done for me. After all the things that I've been through, I'm going to praise him for every door that he opened. I, I'm going to praise him for every check I got in the mail. I, I'm going to praise him even for my trouble because I found out in my trouble, I learned something about God I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for the trouble. That's why the writer said, I bless the Lord at all. God, I wish I had uh, somebody in here who praise him. I bless him for at all times. See, you don't have to, you may not know nothing about me, but at least you know he deserves praise. If he, if he don't do nothing else for me, he still deserves praise. Somebody, uh, that's why Habakkuk said in Habakkuk 3 that if the fig tree don't grow uh, and if the fruit don't uh, have no fruit on the vine, if, if the olive fail and if it yields no food, if the flock is cut off, there, and if there's no herd in the soul, I will still rejoice in Jehovah. In other words, when I'm down to nothing, I'll still praise him for everything that he has done. Do I have anybody in here who is like that? And there's no way that I'm going to come in here with this many Holy Ghost filled people who know who God is and not Shabbat him in this place. You ought to nudge your neighbor real quick and say, you ought not be looking like that. He's been too good to you uh, for you to sit still and cross your arms uh, and cross your leg uh, after everything he's done for you I need to hear some noise up in here do I have anybody in here who know he's been I feel God in this <laughs> stay with me because I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like just jumping this is going to sound radical and I'm, I'm trying to be careful how I say it. But most people in church don't know when to thank him. See, because we rejoice uh, as a result of reciprocity. God bless me. This is what he's done. We only think, thank him when what we get matches what we want. And we pray, that's why our praise is so sporadic. Because we only rejoice for things that we see as good. But we don't know when to thank it. Because praise is better served in trouble. We, we only praise him when, when we get our way. And we don't know that the best praise happens when things ain't working right. Because we missed the negotiation of how God's going to work it together. Oh God, I, I know. I, I, here, here it is. They broke into the house. And all you do is tell everybody about what they took. And you miss the fact that you the one telling it. <laughs> See, you'll get that when you get home. <laughs> See, here, they, they broke in my house. They took my TV. They took my computer. They took my watch. But somebody need to tap you on the shoulder and tell you, but you still here. Why is it that you ain't praising him? See, because you think about the stuff you're missing and you forgot to praise him for the stuff that left. Because God has made a negotiation with the devil that he could not take your life. That's what he said. If you let me touch Job, I'll make him curse 
you to his face. But God says, take everything he has, but leave him alone. Don't take his life because he'll praise me if I let him live. He'll praise me if I give him one more day. He'll lift up his head if I just let him see tomorrow. Is there anybody in here got another reason to praise him? Touch three people and say, I'll bless him for everything he's done. Okay, tweet this. Some of you, your greatest victories won't be celebrated because you're the only one who will see it. Stay with me. You're the only one will know that you went home that night. Y'all slow, but I'll wait on you. you. You're the only one who know what you did and, and that you served and that you blessed. And see, 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 sometimes you you miss you miss praising God because you're expecting something that ain't coming from God. But your greatest victories are not the ones that take you out front. But the stuff you do when ain't nobody looking. And the reason that God blesses you bigger for stuff that nobody sees is because God's not doing things in your life for that, so that people can see it. He's doing it to take you through process. Just give me just a few minutes. You are in process and you don't even know when it comes. Because process is not really designed to expose you. It's designed to change you. Because processing is about uh, creating something that's usable for a particular purpose. And so what God says is that I had to put this in your life so that it could change your life so that I won't, that, that you not only would you be useful for, for this thing, but you can be useful for my thing. See, you got too much stuff in your past that's dead, but you ain't buried it yet. So what God does is that he sends you through a process that everything that's dead in your life that you will let go. <laughs> you carrying dead things. And you say you got rid of them but you ain't buried them. And watch this now. People who know you will know that they're still with you because they smell them on you. Because you can't carry around dead stuff long without it smelling. And God says before, because you don't have the ability to get rid of things, I need to do some things in your life to help you separate from them. I put too much in you for you to end up petty. You've been through too much hell. To be sitting around worried about who like you. And who gonna help you. All my help. I feel preaching coming. See you don't have to be. You, you don't have to uh, be liked as long as you're called. You, you, in fact sometimes your calling makes liking difficult. Because people can like you uh, on your way into something. But they can't deal with you on your way out. Because when God brings you out he elevates you. And some people they like where you are. But they can't handle where God's taking you. So what God I wish I had somebody. Can you go through all that you've been through and still hold a grudge? I 
and sit around like there's nothing wrong. Hug each other like there's nothing there. After all you've been through. See, 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 see you know what? It, it, how you think about uh, somebody has, should have nothing to do with how you treat them. Bible said, "Love those that hate you." Yeah. <laughs> I, I, in, in other words, you know they hate you, but you love them. Bless those that persecute you. In other words, get them something. I can't get nobody. <laughs> she, she, listen, see, you don't understand. It ain't about them. It's process. God's doing something in you. And God is testing how you handle, how, how, how you can handle it when, when you go through something that you don't like it. Deal with somebody that you can't stand. It. And then when they get on your nerve, how do you, because you've been on somebody's nerve, as much grace as God's given you, how it is that you ain't going to go through process and still holding on to dead things. You got to learn how, that when poor folk just spitefully use you, you got to bury it and you got to bless them anyhow. Paul gives this list of misfortunes that happened to his life, but I'm glad he don't close it until he finds out that what the butt is on the other side of his life. See, some people, all you talk about is the stuff that happened, but you don't ever get to the place uh, that you start beginning to thank God for the stuff that he made happen. Is there anybody in here, even though you're going through hell, you can turn around and say, but I don't know if I got somebody that I, I'm preaching to, but that anybody in here uh, who knows uh, that even though you've been in your worst time, uh, but you're still here, uh, still woke up in the morning. If you can learn how to say but in the middle of what you go through, God says it transitions your thinking, and your thinking is all that matters. If you can understand that, yes, I've been hungry, yes, I've been broke, yes, I've been out of job, yes, my children ain't always had everything they want. If you can say but, but changes everything. Do I have anybody in here that even though you can say but God, if I, anybody got a but God in here? Watch this, and I may not get to preach anymore. When you say but, you just turned everything around. <laughs> See, that's why you don't even wait to people acknowledge your last trouble. Because you're sure about what God's going to do in the trouble. Paul had said in 2 Corinthians 11, he says, he says five times I received 39 stripes. I've been through. Isn't it something how people can look at you now and act like you ain't never been through nothing? They don't even know. Sometimes I just laugh at folk who, who, who think that, uh, that I just got to church uh, with a suit on. Uh, Sometimes, baby, uh, you, you know how it is uh, that God keeps you saved uh, for so long and you've been in church 20 and 30 years and folk who've been saved now two years be acting like you don't understand. Baby, I do understand. But I got a lot of butts in my life. I, I got a lot of turnarounds. I got situations that if God didn't help me, I'll still be talking like you talking. But because God has helped me, every time I see something come up, and every time somebody tell me how it's going, in, I don't let people write the end of my story. The strip's already been written. I understand that no matter what it looks like, God has already put at the end. And at the end, I know I'm coming out. I know I'm getting my praise off. I know the Lord is blessing me. Somebody say, after all the things I've been through, but God been broke but God, been divorced but God, almost lost my mind but God, had folks allowing me but God, folk walked away from me but God, but God, when mother and father forsake me then the Lord. Uh, three minutes. Have you ever been discouraged? I mean, discouraging, really, sometimes you can't figure out where it's coming from. Okay, I got the right room. You, I mean, just, 
I mean, woke, I mean, went to bed, fine, woke up. Old people say the devil melon with me. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how I don't know how it is that, that that God can have done so much for us and we can forget before nightfall everything that he's done sometimes sometimes when I think about this church I think about how God has uh, how people who have stood uh, in this church and stood uh, against the predators and the enemies will look one day and say you know what I don't feel like it no more you've been through hell it's almost like you've been in storms and you drowned from a sprinkle. You had bullet wounds. You died from a paper cut. How is it after all the things you've been through that you fall over over nothing? They didn't treat me right. They didn't say that the right way. You know how foolish that sound after the devil been asking for your life? Baby, see, it, what, what, what I had to learn, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to close after this, don't worry. What, what I had to learn was some things you can't try to resolve. <laughs> baby some things you just got to you know you know you got to just turn the faucet off and don't let them keep running because you ain't gonna never get no clean water out of it so some things you just got to ignore and and and, 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 and just go on and live your life because because you ain't gonna never make no sense out of it and it ain't never go it is, it's never gonna be what you thought it was going to be you just got to keep on living and just got to keep on praying sometimes you got to praise God in the face of people who ain't gonna never be right with you you do know that there's some people there's some things that you could get right with God and never right with people don't you you do know that God's gonna forgive you in some places that people ain't gonna never think you change You survived too much. This church has survived too much for, for, for people to come in weak now. Your process is to make you strong. Don't, after you've, all you've been through, you mean to tell me that you...